Bill O'Reilly won't be coming back to Fox News amid more allegations of sexual harassment. We hear from his newest accuser. And UC Berkeley cancels a controversial speaker invited to campus over safety concerns. And Hollywood screenwriters are voting on whether to go on strike. USC students tell us how this could impact their summer plans. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. Even if you are the most powerful news network in the United States, and even if you are the most popular host on the most popular news ne network in the United States, you're not above the law. Another woman is accusing Bill O'Reilly of sexual harassment on the same day Fox News says that he's out. Good evening, I'm Kaylee Heck. And I'm Rachel Ramos. The primetime host will not be returning to Fox after two decades with the network. O'Reilly and Fox News paid $13 million to five women over the past 15 years to settle allegations of misconduct. Over 50 advertisers have since pulled their ads from his show, The O'Reilly Factor, and more women have come forward with accusations of sexual harassment. Lisa Bloom is an L.A. lawyer who represents three of the women accusing O'Reilly of harassment. In a tweet, Bloom quote, wrote, quote, imagine facing four, your fears, standing up to an abuser, speaking out about sexual harassment. Do the unimaginable. Be brave. Be bold. Bloom represents former Fox News employee Caroline Heldman, who filed a complaint just this morning. Heldman says she experienced sexual discrimination during all three years she worked at Fox. The fact that so many women are now coming forward also speaks to this, you know, this culture of silence. Um, this, uh, you know, I haven't been on, on Bill's show since 2011 when he kicked me off because I called him on sexism. And so, you know, it took me a long time to come forward and I came forward because other women were coming forward and I wanted to be supportive. I think it's important to keep in mind that um, this behavior is unlawful and that it, it has been unlawful for decades and that if you experience it, um, it's important to come forward because you never know how, how many other women might be experiencing something similar. Bill O'Reilly issued this statement while on a plane back from Italy saying, quote, it is tremendously disheartening that we part ways due to completely unfounded claims. But that is the unfortunate reality many of us in the public eye must live with today. Fox News host Tucker Carlson will move from his 9 p.m. slot into O'Reilly's longtime 8 p.m. slot. We have breaking news coming in right now. USG President Austin Dunn told Annenberg Media the USC Academic Senate has voted today to approve a fall break. The break would be during the eighth week of classes during the fall semester. The resolution says the break is supposed to match the structure of the spring semester and help to improve students' mental health. It still needs the approval of the USC administration. Annenberg Media will be sure to keep you updated with any new information. UC Berkeley officials canceled an upcoming visit by right-wing commentator Ann Coulter. They say they can't find a safe spot for her talk next week, given recent protests. The email to organizers read in part, quote, Unfortunately, UCPD determined that given currently active security threats, it is not possible to assure that the event could be held successfully. Cal Berkeley Democrats say they understand the university's decision. We all thought it was a bad idea to bring her to campus. She's more of a provocateur than she is a intellectual. She has terrible ideas and she isn't, she's a bad person. Her books have been pointed out to be incorrect and wrong time after time. Berkeley College Republicans said in a statement, quote, UC Berkeley has enacted punitive policies toward the Berkeley College Republicans. These new policies are unwritten, subjective, and used in a discriminatory manner to censor conservative speakers. Canceling Coulter's speech comes after violent protests broke out on Cal Berkeley's campus in February. A visit by right-wing speaker Milo Yiannopoulos had to be canceled, and several other protests broke out in recent weeks. Coulter tweeted out today that no school accepting public funds can ban free speech. She says that she is still planning on speaking at Berkeley next Thursday. 
Police released more details about the deadly shooting in Fresno yesterday that killed three people. They are now calling the shooting a hate crime. The suspect yelled God is great in Arabic when he was arrested, but police say his motive was race and not religion. Corey Mohammed is not a terrorist, but he is a racist and he's filled with hate and he set out this past week to kill as many people as he possibly could. Police say Corey Mohammed, who is black, had posted on social media about his hatred of white people. The three victims were white and apparently did not know the suspect. One of the victims was 37-year-old Mark Gassett. His mother says her family is devastated. He had two beautiful little boys. Um, he was a good-hearted person, very caring, very loving. Mohammed was also a suspect in the murder of a security guard last Thursday at a Motel 6. He now faces four counts of murder and two counts of assault with a deadly weapon. The Writers Guild of America began voting today on whether to go on strike this summer. As Annenberg Media's Giovanni Mujahid shows us, a strike would affect some USC students. Students at the film school aren't just worried about finals. It's a little disappointing to hear, oh, it's gone. Gone the feeling of security that comes with the summer internship. It is very worrying to know that all of, all of our internships may be canceled, basically with everyone who is in the film school, essentially. The Writers Guild of America is considering going on strike. It will virtually stop production on scripted television shows until a deal with the studios is reached. But if there's a strike, there's no telling how long it would last. It's basically this kind of vicious cycle that's creating great television, but at a steep cost. WGA is asking for better terms from the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. The Alliance represents more than 350 50 production companies and studios and has not accepted the union's request for higher pay and better health benefits. We're just trying to get a little bigger piece of a very, very big pie. But students are worried a strike would hurt writers as they believe it did when WGA went on strike in 2007. It just means more Bachelor, more Big Brother, shows like that that are going to take over to fill the content that you know, is formally scripted. I'm working in development this summer at a studio and I'm just hoping that there's no reason for them to terminate my position if there isn't something for me to do. Senior year is so much like really building up those networks and if we're no longer going to have access to those networks, we're just as inconvenienced, I guess, post-grad. WGA will resume talks with the Alliance next Tuesday after voting has ended. Students will keep a focused lens on what happens. For Annenberg Media, I'm Giovanni Mujais. A new report says six of the top 10 cities with the worst air quality are right here in California. That's according to the American Lung Association's annual State of the Air report. Bakersfield kept its ranking as the most polluted city in America. Visalia, Fresno, and Modesto all have poor air quality too. The Golden State has dominated the top 10 list each year, putting more than 90% of California residents at risk for premature death and other health hazards. Indonesia's capital city, Jakarta, held its election today. The city's first Christian governor conceded defeat to a former minister who is Muslim. Our international reporter, Alicia Wajaja, has more on the story from the Media Center. Alicia? Today's election was widely seen as a test of religious and ethnic tolerance in the world's most populous Muslim-majority nation. The incumbent, known as Ahok, is a Christian and of Chinese descent. He lost to Anias Baswedan, a Muslim who met publicly with hardline Islamist groups during the campaign. Polls showed Ahok was ahead of Baswedan in the first round of the election. He then lost ground after voters after he was accused of blasphemy stemming from commenting on a verse in the Quran. The Jakarta Post has called the election the most divisive and polarizing the nation has ever seen. I spoke to some USC students from Indonesia who agree. There's a growing movement towards, I would say, like radic radicalization. Most of, if not all, the students here are rooting, we're rooting for Ahok, who is seen as the unconventional political leader that you can actually count on. And a lot of them express um, disbelief. I'm very hopeful that they're going to continue the work of AHOK. A lot of um, people are scared for the future. Because of the election, there's a lot of um, anti
anti-Chinese sentiment. I do kind of fear that because of this whole election thing, the Chinese community is targeted. The new governor takes office in October. Ahok told his supporters to come together for the good of the city. Kaylee and Rachel, back to you. An L.A. group is offering help for renters who have problems with their landlords. We talked to USC students about how they handle housing. Behind me, DPS officers are urging students to register their bikes. Stay tuned to find out why it's so important. And hundreds of volunteers are spending Saturdays at the L.A. River. We'll take you to the cleanup effort next. So good to see you guys. So, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough save to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Is it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Renters from around Los Angeles gathered today in MacArthur Park to demand change to housing laws. Annenberg Media's Mark Salinger was there and shows us why some feel landlords have too much power. For Al Sabo, rising rent has had a big effect. If I had more income, uh, I could live a better life myself and be able to give my children, uh, who are now uh, in their 20s, uh, uh, more help when they need it. Today, he joined dozens of others in MacArthur Park for the fourth annual Renters Day LA. <laughs> Renters are extremely vulnerable in Los Angeles. The movement hopes to change that. About 60% of all Los Angeles residents live in rental housing. Today's event offered legal help for renters, many of whom organizers say are being taken advantage of. The rents are going up, all kinds of loopholes that allow landlords to have disproportionate power over their tenants, and something needs to be done about that. After I pay my rent, all my money's spent. Protesters called for city leaders to institute a rent increase moratorium and create a landlord anti-harassment ordinance. For renters here, the ultimate goal is to have their voices heard. At the booth behind me, they're calling city council members to make sure that they know that they want change. Hello, my name is uh, Mike Nash, and I'm calling on, uh, with this, to leave this message, message for the council member. USC student Max Holm considered legal action when the management company that owns his house on 30th Street near USC began doing construction. My roommates and I started going through our contract, going through our lease, and we found two breaches of our lease. Holm was able to resolve his dispute and is now happy with his landlord but says everyone should be aware of their rights as renters. As students, especially now my fourth year here, you kind of see how people like to take advantage of students. It was kind of refreshing to see that actually work out. But for Sabo and others struggling to pay increased rent, we'll continue to fight until something's done. Affordable housing is still the goal. For U.S. Annenberg Media, I'm Mark Salinger. Right now, DPS is holding a bike registration event for students. Annenberg Media's Addie Stafford is live there now with more on why DPS says registration matters. Addie? Bike registrations are happening here at 30th and University and at Jefferson and Orchard. All we do is take a student ID, uh, take the, the information off of that, you know, name, phone number, things like that. Uh, we apply the registration sticker to it, uh, 
add the that information to the system, the sticker number to the person's information, to the bike information. You know, you kind of cover all your bases with it. It covers you in case of impound. It covers. It helps you out if it is uh, lost or stolen, uh, things like that. So really, I can't. I can't say how important it is. I, I can't stress enough how important it is, I should say, um, because it makes everyone's life easier. DPS is going to have events like this every single month. It only takes about five minutes to register your bike, but if you don't even have that time, you can also register online. Just make sure you head to DPS station, uh, which is located at parking structure A, to get your identification sticker. Now this sticker will help DPS link your bike back to you. This is Addie Safford reporting for Annenberg Media. Rachel and Kaylee tossing it back to you in the studio. Thanks for that, Addy. Kaylee, you know, I actually felt a little drizzle last night. I wonder if that's going to continue. I honestly hope it doesn't. This spring weather is doing great things for my tan. Let's hear how hot it got today from our weather anchor, Madeline Audley. Good evening, everyone. We have had clear, beautiful skies all day long today. It is still pretty warm outside. Now we've got around 70 degrees, which is not bad at all for this time of day. Tomorrow, things are going to start heating up. Up in the mountains, Big Bear's looking right around 61, which is nice and warm up on the slopes. Same trend continuing at the coastline as well. In Malibu, we've got about 68 degrees. Great temperatures for a stroll on the beach with a slight breeze in the morning. It's going to be really hot back at home. We are expecting USC to be right around 77 degrees. That's a big jump from today, but it's going to get even hotter as we approach the weekend. Looking at our five day, we've got upper 80s moving in Friday and Saturday. That's going to slowly jump down to that upper 70s for Sunday and Monday. The summer is totally creeping up on us, guys, and that sun is here to remind you. This weekend, the 28th annual Great LA River cleanup will be in full swing. You know, this river is 51 miles long. It snakes through all sorts of different communities. The Friends of LA River organization says this is the largest urban river cleanup in America. It happens over three weeks and at 14 sites. It's a really sort of unifying opportunity. The cleanup goes from the valley down to Long Beach, and it's not just about picking up trash. Organizers want to make the river a neighborhood hotspot. If this were in such great use and demand that we had a constant stream of people enjoying it, we wouldn't have to be cleaning it up once a year. O'Connell says the heavy rain this year means extra trash, but they're not worried. They say some sites will see over a thousand volunteers. People are hungry to make a tangible difference that they can touch and see and feel, um, and that is cleaning up this river. Cleanups continue the next two Saturdays. The closest site this weekend is in Echo Park. I say we get the whole team and we make a road trip and, and go clean up the river. Definitely, that actually really inspires me to want to volunteer. It's great to see so many people out there just trying to make the community a little better and a little cleaner. Well, thanks so much, Madeline. USG released its proposed budget for the 2017-2018 school year. Concerts committee got more money while the volunteer center and lead programs are losing all funding. This school year, the Volunteer Center got nearly $75,000 in funding from USG. It organizes the Alternative Break Program for Students and the Friends and Neighbors Day Program. LEAD programs also got money, but the new budget proposal won't give any USG allocated money to them. LEAD programs work with students on leadership development, educational awareness, and civic engagement. USG Treasurer Danielle Bonyard says they want student affairs to pay for these programs because USG thinks the programming fees students pay shouldn't be used to cover it. I hear that we have quite a few matchups against the UCLA coming up. That's right, these rivalry games are always so intense, but let's hear more about them from our sports anchor, Julia Adams. Thanks, Kaylee and Rachel. Big matchups are brewing this week as four USC teams are set to face crosstown rival UCLA. Hear from a men's tennis player about how the team is preparing for the Bruins with a Pac-12 regular season title on the line. And if you're interested in learning a fun fact about head coach Clay Helton, stay tuned for an exclusive sit-down with football's Chris Hawkins and Deontay Burnett. If you store your guns properly, I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories. And I won't have to tell my kids. This isn't a drill. Please. Please, do it for us. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Get your out here. Yes, I am. Every day.
day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. <laughs> to Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money gonna come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not home. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Welcome back to ATVN. The pro sports world is booming with news. Here are today's top stories. Former Patriots star Aaron Hernandez committed suicide in his Massachusetts prison cell this morning. His death comes just days after his acquittal in a double murder case. Hernandez was serving a life sentence following a separate murder charge in 2015. The Patriots visited the White House today, but without the quarterback who led them to a Super Bowl victory. Before the trip, Tom Brady announced he would not be in attendance because of family issues. Tennis superstar Serena Williams revealed she is pregnant with her first child on Snapchat today. Williams posted a shot of herself in a swimsuit caption, 20 weeks. The baby is due next fall. From the pro sports world back to USC, number six men's tennis is gearing up to battle for a Pac-12 regular season title against rival UCLA on Friday. We caught up with sophomore Jack Yader to discuss the matchup. We're trying not to make it a bigger deal than it is, but we do. It's an awesome experience playing UCLA. It's going to be rowdy, but yeah, you just got to enjoy it. At the end of the day, it's just another match. We still got Pac-12s and NCAs, and yeah, just got to get ready for that. Face UCLA this week. The women's tennis, water polo, and beach volleyball teams all have matches against the Bruins this weekend. Sports correspondent Angel Viscara is joining me now to discuss the upcoming matchups. Thank you so much for joining me, Angel. Pleasure. So there's a lot more on the line than these matchups and just a rivalry. Starting back with men's tennis, they have a Pac 12 regular season title on the line, and they're starting at the number six seed while the UCLA is a number eight seed. Yeah, you mentioned there's a lot on the line. It's all going to come down to this matchup between USC and UCLA for who comes away with that Pac-12 regular season title. Uh, this USC team has beat UCLA earlier in the year, but they also dropped the conference matchup to the Bruins, so they split the series. This is going to be the rubber match this weekend in Westwood. And this team has really been impressive with the youth they have, the amount of success they've had. A guy like Brandon Holt, a freshman, he's the only top 25 ranked player in the nation on this team right now. So he's going to be carrying a big load for this team when they go into that really crucial matchup on Saturday. Yeah, the freshmen have really been leading the team this season, but the men's tennis team is not the only tennis yeah. team playing the Bruins this weekend. The women's tennis team is playing them as well on Saturday, but the women's tennis team has been struggling a little bit more, and they're ranked 32nd. Yeah, you mentioned they've been struggling a little more. They've had a real roller coaster of a season. They've had some really high points, topping some really solid teams, but throughout the whole year, it feels like they've been hovering around that 500 mark, really struggling to break away from that, but they have an opportunity to make a real statement against a strong UCLA team that is 7-2 and two in conference play this season so they have the opportunity to make a big stride and take a big jump before that Pac-12 tournament at the end of the month and I really do expect this team to come out ready to make a strong statement at the end of the season. And I don't know about you, but the matchup that I'm looking most forward to is actually yeah. the women's water polo matchup. It's number one seed versus number two seed, the number two seed being USC, because we did lose to Stanford. So it's a matchup that will basically determine who's going to be at the top of the nation. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of role reversal. I mean, usually when we enter a matchup like this, it's USC in the number one slot and UCLA trying to steal that from them. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Trojans respond to going on the road and trying to beat the top team in the nation. And there are a lot of playoff scenarios and a lot of things going on with MPSF standings and whatnot. Not, but one thing's for sure, whoever wins this matchup is going to lead the regular season as the top team in the nation, and that's something to say. And for USC, if they lose this matchup, it's kind of a scary situation. I mean, they can drop all the way back to third in just their conference standings alone. So it'll be interesting to see how USC responds. Earlier in the year, they obviously played against each other. Back in February, they had that thriller of a 10-9 matchup against one another. So this women's water polo match, number one versus number two, it doesn't get better than that.
there's another number one and number two seed matchup yeah. with beach volleyball. They seem absolutely unstoppable this season. They're the number one seed in this case. Yeah, we talked about it before the show. It's, it's incredible um, the amount of matchups that we're going to have this weekend that are between number one and number two ranked teams. Uh, this matchup is an opportunity for beach volleyball to finish the perfect season, 30-0 and 0 season. They're going to have one big final test this Saturday when they go play UCLA. And we think about the 56-game win streak that USC has had this season. And really, the only team that's ever punched USC in the mouth and even threatened that winning streak was UCLA last month when USC won by a narrow 3-2 margin. So it'll be interesting to see how the women of Troy respond to facing arguably their top team against this season. So I just have one question for you. Out of all these matchups coming up, which one do you think is most impactful for the future of the team? Uh, in my opinion, the, the women's water polo match is going to be the biggest. It's going to be the most instrumental. I mean, women's water polo was at the top of the water polo world for over a calendar year, and they got dethroned by Stanford. So it'll be interesting to see if they can respond and reclaim that top spot with a big match against UCLA. Thanks, Angel, for joining me. We'll see these tro if, if these Trojan teams can come out on top this weekend. Spring football is over, but two Trojans poised to make an impact next season joined sports scene today and gave a fun insight about head coach Clay Helton. Being a football team, you know, we play rap music. I mean, every almost every day, you know, before meetings. And, you know, you would never know that he really, he really vibes to the music. He really dances to the music, yeah. you know, with us. So that's something that I find, you know, pretty funny in its own right. But at the same time, like, he's really adapting to his players and what yeah. his players like. And I think that's something that makes him such a great coach. Well, I wish I could see Helton get down to rap. Kaylee and Rachel, what about you guys? That'd be entertaining. Yeah. USC is looking for some stylish, spirited Trojans to tr promote the new USC Village. We'll have the details on the competition and how you can get involved next. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. You're texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. USC Residential Education and USC Student Affairs are holding a contest to be featured in an upcoming University Village photo shoot and win some dorm decor. The contest will run through May 2nd. Thanks for watching Annenberg TV News. From everyone at Annenberg Media, I'm Kaylee Heck. And I'm Rachel Ramos. You can catch us on the web at uscannenbergmedia.com. Good night.